Have you ever dreamed of building a property portfolio but you feel overwhelmed by the process or maybe don't really have the time to invest? Today I'm going to show you a powerful strategy that will help you with your property investing goals even with a busy schedule. Starting with buy, refurbish, rent, refinance, repeat. I absolutely love this strategy and if you've not heard of it before, you'll probably love it too by the end of this video. It helps you recycle your capital and grow a property portfolio relatively simply but also quickly. However, when I say quickly, it's not a get rich quick scheme. There is no shortcut to success in property. It's very much a slow burner. There's a lot of decision making in property. So you have to really keep your finger on the pulse. First up is to buy. The key here is to buy below market value. This could be a distressed property, a repossession, or just a motivated seller. There are plenty of them out there. If you're in the UK, you can use tools like Right to Move, Zoopla, Auctions, and also networking with your local estate agents. Build some rapport, build your network, and pop in and say hi every now and again. Depending on timing of the markets, estate agents can literally be your best friends. However, if it's a really hot market, being low support high demand you may not hear back from estate agents as frequently as you would want to. A good rule of thumb for purchasing investment properties is to buy below market value. This could be 15 to 20% ensuring you have enough margin for profit or renovation costs. I like to go a little bit more aggressive. I guess it depends on your risk appetite. If you're happy to leave money in a property deal then you can go for a lower margin. Negotiation is such a critical skill that will help you in your property investment journey. One of the main things that we want to avoid at all times is insulting our potential vendor. If we insult the vendor, we may not only lose ourselves a property, we can also really cost our relationship that we've built over time with estate agents. You don't wanna be falling out with people in this industry. It's a very, very small world once you start to uncover it. If you don't know too much about properties, hire a surveyor, bring a builder with you, take somebody who does have a bit more of an understanding. It's no different to when you go to buy a car. If you don't know anything about mechanics and cars, bring someone with you that does because you're likely to be sold a dud. There are a few red flags when it comes to buildings. For example, subsidence, the severity of it, Japanese not weed. It might just look like a flower to you. Don't let your emotions cloud your judgment and be prepared to walk away. I've lost a few properties due to it just not being the right fit. It's so bittersweet. It's one of those that you know that it would never work out. You need to have a maximum offer for each property. Once you've done your numbers, once you've worked out your calculations, if it exceeds that, let it go. Effective negotiation is all about knowing your boundaries, understanding property values and making decisions based on strategy rather than emotions. Next up we have refurbish. This is where you add value to the property through renovations. I like to purchase really rundown properties. Properties that are known as smelly properties. This is typically when they've got avocado coloured bathrooms or pink toilets and they look like they haven't been touched in decades, like a little miniature time capsule. Those properties are the ones that I like to go for. And the reason for this is because you can make the most impact. And once you've got your smelly property, you do a full strip out. Focus on those high impact areas. If you can do a kitchen bathroom replacement, you'll potentially need a rewire. You might find through wallpaper stripping or knocking on walls that the plaster has blown and you'll need to replaster. You might need a new boiler, improve the EPC, change all the light fittings. If you have some subsidence, you may need to do some heli fixing and structural stitching, waterproofing, damp treatment. You might uncover all of these hidden things that you never knew of. For example, woodworm. You may have a load of rotten joists that you need to replace. Artex, asbestos. So please don't be under any illusion that the refurbished part of it is just a lick of paint on the walls. It's basically like putting a plaster on a problem and hoping that it will go away. It doesn't go away it gets worse. I always recommend if you're going to do it, do it properly. Don't cut corners and don't hire people that don't know what they're doing. Once you've focused on the high impact areas such as a new kitchen, a new bathroom, it's all freshly plastered and decorated, you've got nice flooring down, time to focus your attention on the external side of the property. It's curb appeal. You may need to do some fresh rendering out the front or paint the windows change windows, change the front door, put some tiles on the steps. You might want to do some re-landscaping out the front, out the back, make it really presentable. When it comes around to getting your property valued for the mortgage, 
you're going to want the best bang for your buck. Often mortgage down valuations can be a real problem when it comes to your property investing. This can't always be avoided. The valuer is working on behalf of the mortgage company. The mortgage company wants to protect their assets and their money and where the money's going. So they need to sometimes undervalue it to protect themselves. We have to go above the odds to make sure that we're not gonna be affected and our margins won't be affected and we extract as much money out of the deal as possible to push it into the next property. Look for more ways than one to add value to your property. For example, purchasing under market value, renovating, and if we can, maybe add an extra bedroom. And then you could potentially do something like a garage conversion. So if there's already an existing structure there that you can repurpose and add an opening into the property, add a downstairs toilet or a utility room, a bedroom. You can also do a loft conversion. There's a dual aspect or just a large master bedroom with two windows. You can add a stud partition wall down the center and create two bedrooms. There's also a longer route and a more costly route you can use your permitted development rights to extend or alter your home for example a loft conversion a rear extension there's also planning gains if you're going to convert a property into two dwellings such as a masonette you have a downstairs flat and a first floor flat it will take months to get your response back and i've seen it take years what we've also done on refurbishments is to improve the acoustic performance of the building which people don't necessarily do however it improves the quality of life for not just the person living within the dwelling, but the neighbors. And if they're noisy neighbors, there's a lot of noise pollution that creeps into the property. We like to add a layer of acoustic insulation, acoustic plasterboard, and to just try and deafen some of that noise if we can. If you're intending on major structural alterations, such as knocking down internal walls, don't forget to use a structural engineer and also a really reputable builder. Always check with your local council and your local building authority to make sure that you're doing things correctly and you're not doing anything without permission. That can have severe repercussions. Getting work signed off, whether it's by electricians or building control, dependent on your time, experience and budget, there are two main options for managing your refurbishment. Step number one is self-manage, which means that you essentially have more control over the project. You can decide what works you do and what works you do not. You may wish to outsource special specialized tasks such as plastering, electrics, plumbing and structural works to subcontractors. This is work that you can't necessarily do and you don't have the skill to do. This approach can be more cost effective, however it requires significant time and effort on your part. Alternatively, you can use a main contractor to oversee the entire project. This approach typically requires a percentage fee of the overall project's cost. It could be 10 to 15 percent or higher depending on where you live. It is typically more expensive, you don't have as much control over the project. It can often lead to a more smoother process, a less stressful process. It saves you time and it ensures all trades are coordinated effectively. The main builder will be there. They'll be putting people in place as and when they need to. A main contractor will have a really good steer on the sequencing of how to do renovation projects, who needs to come in next, how long they really take for the size of the job and the scope of works. So if you're feeling a little bit out of your comfort zone, maybe leave it to the professionals. Choose an option that works best for your time, your skill set, and your budget. Once the refurb is complete, it is time to rent the property to a tenant. Finding good tenants is crucial and you need to make sure that you screen them appropriately. Checking their credit score, employment, history and references. You can use a property management software or you can outsource the management aspect to a letting agent. If you're new to property investing and you don't have a lot of time on your hands to self-manage, make sure you factor in the management costs into your early stages before you put forward your property purchase offer. Now for the exciting part is the refinance. Now that the property is let, you will want to refinance and pull out all of that equity that you've built since the day that you've purchased. That includes the below market value, the adding value. In the UK, a common target is to achieve a loan to value ratio of 75%. This means that the lender will typically offer a 75% 
loan to the property of what the overall value is worth. The property's new market value. So it's most recent after you've added all of this value. If the property is priced at £200,000, in theory, you should be able to pull £50,000 from the property by using a product such as a buy-to-let mortgage at a 75% loan-to-value rate. And once you've extracted that £50,000, you can then put that into the next property and go again. And by going again, that's where the repeat comes into it, which is the final R. Be sure to shop around for the best refinancing terms and rates. Make sure you get yourself a reputable mortgage advisor. A good mortgage advisor can become an asset to your team. Make sure that you do your due diligence and that they're FCA regulated. Ask them questions about investment properties. Check their knowledge. You also need to make sure that you're targeting your desired ROI, which is the return on investment. You may have heard of this before. Some people target eight to 10%. Some people go a bit higher. Personally, I like to target a 25% ROI, which can make deal qualifying a little bit more tricky when it comes to sourcing in the first place. Not very many properties show a 25% ROI. If they were, they would be snapped up pretty quickly. You have to negotiate well early on. Whichever your risk appetite and your return on investment, make sure that your property investing is worth your while. With your investment back in hand, it's time to repeat the process. This repeating process allows you to grow your portfolio and there you have it that is a beginner's guide to the BRRRR strategy with some careful planning and smart management you can start to build your property investment portfolio even with a full-time job if you found this video helpful please give it a thumbs up and if you want to see more of my property investing for beginners series don't forget to hit subscribe and the bell so you don't miss out on the next video and if you have any questions please drop them down below and I will get back to you as soon as possible I hope you enjoyed I'll see you in the next one